people fighting inside the fairgrounds. Stories that matter to you. This is Fox 6 News. Chaos at the state fair. It starts with people fighting inside the fairgrounds. These guys just come come swinging up at each other like the fight was moving up like on the side of us. This fight was just the beginning of the violence. Police say a mob of young people then spilled out into the streets of Milwaukee and West Dallas and randomly attacked fairgoers because of their race. Milwaukee Police Chief Ed Flynn making a bold promise tonight. He says what happened last night will not happen again at State Fair or any other Milwaukee event that draws crowds. And he's promising a platoon at officers at big events this weekend. And he's sending a special team of officers to the State Fair tonight. Our Myra Sanchez is there live with the new security changes. Yeah, right behind me you can see this new measure of security here at the Wisconsin State Fair. These guards here are carding people as they come in and anybody who is not 18 has to come here with an adult for the first time ever at the Wisconsin State Fair. Do you guys have IDs? Security asked for IDs to get into the fair. Most fairgoers say they think it's a good idea. Do you expect to be carded? No, I didn't. I completely forgot about it. <laughs> what do you think of the effort? I support it. Many say security should do what is needed to prevent a repeat of Thursday night. Police say large groups of mostly teens got very unruly, even violent. I really don't feel yeah. bad about it since I'm over 18. It's just a safety precaution. I don't think it's a big deal. Very few teens and young adults came unprepared. These teens did not look happy, but they did not make a fuss when turned away. Others took any inconvenience in stride. I had to go back to my car and get it. So, so you weren't prepared? <laughs> no, we weren't prepared, no. Many who came to State Fair prepared to be carded say they'll also try to be prepared if the crowd gets rowdy. I didn't see that on the news, but my dad told me today when I was on my way here. So I'm a little bit more cautious today. I'm just happy that it's like more of like a family thing now that people can come here like with their families when they're not of age to come in. And very few people were turned away because they were underage. Things went very smoothly. And I was watching them for a little bit, and actually these security staff guards were very non-confrontational and really handled the situation quite well with anybody who was coming in to get carded. Reporting live at State Fair in West Dallas, Myra Sanchez, Fox 6 News. Myra, thank you very much. A number of people, however, were hurt last night in and around State Fair Park. Fox 6's Brandon Cruz live tonight at State Fair, where he caught up with a few of the people who were attacked. Brandon? Yeah, we talked with a number of people who were just surprised they got caught up in such a situation. Well, today, they're obviously thankful they're able to talk about what happened to them. I was just wondering, like, where is all the help? Like, we saw some commotion. There was a lot of people running around screaming and yelling as the state fair came to a close Thursday night chaos was seemingly everywhere to Steve Danielle who was trying to get to his car as I was walking I looked to the corner and they just completely just hit some guy cold knocked him down Randy Lee was in a car around the same time and in the same general area by 84th Street in Schlinger I just wanted to help him because I thought they were gonna kill him and so I, I opened the door but as I was opening the door um, somebody's head, you know, kicked me and started trying to punch me. So I, they tried to pull me out of the car. But Lee was able to get back in the car and get away. I just started to go. Bam, I felt it right on the side of my face. Danielle was also able to get away after being hit. It's just sore, throbbing a little bit. And the eye, like when I move my eye a little bit, you can kind of feel that there's, you know, it doesn't feel quite right. But the effects are still visible a day later. Uh, some broken blood vessels and it's sunk in my cheekbone a little bit. Meanwhile, a few blocks away at 87th and Greenfield, Jaron Brezovar was walking home from the fair and ran into a few teenagers. One of them asked me for a cigarette. After giving a cigarette to the young man, the situation situation changed. I felt something hit me in the back of the head and uh, turned around another one came running at me and I started wrestling with them, fought them off and uh, once I got free that's what I see more coming I took off running. He escaped with only scrapes to his hands and knees but all agree the situation Thursday night caught them by surprise. I had no idea I didn't know what was going on. I was pretty scared actually. 
And one of the men you saw there, Steve Danielle, will be going to the doctor because he did show you that his face does look like it is sunken in a little on his cheek. Now, also injured in all of this throughout the evening were seven State Fair police officers. Two of them went to the hospital. One had been hit in the face with an improvised weapon. Another suffered a concussion when he was hit in the back of the head. They have since been released from the hospital, but they have not yet returned to work. Live at State Fair Park, Brandon Cruz, Fox 6 News. Is there a common theme with the victims? Did they say anything about why these attackers chose them? Do they believe it was based on race? Did, uh, did they relay any conversations such as they were that happened between? Well, one of the victims felt that it was racial. He had heard racial epithets being said, but the others didn't say anything like that and didn't hear anything like that. And also another thing that was common with some people we talked to on and off camera is the, the groups of people would be asking for things like a cigarette or to borrow a phone, and then that's when they would proceed to attack that person. So that's how some of those situations occurred. The other ones, while the people were in the car, it was just a huge mob of people that just overwhelmed the situation. Brandon Cruz in West Dallas tonight. Thanks. Eyewitnesses say they have never seen anything like this happen before. And although many of the fights were reported at night, as we just discussed, we have footage tonight showing that the violence actually started in the broad daylight yesterday. Our Brett Boganski talked with some people who saw the early scuffles. There's fights everywhere. It was a, a violent crowd. They were looking for something. Everywhere you went. Scariest thing in the world. I ain't know what to do. One after another. The run and kick. Punching them. It's all anybody is talking about. Yesterday was like a mob rule. Hey, 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 hey. On the opening day of the Wisconsin State Fair, these are the images stuck in the minds of many. It was a lot of yelling and chaos and screaming, and it was just intense. Star Letha Yanev witnessed multiple fights during her first hour at the fair and was able to record one of them on her cell phone. It was like a gang of girls fighting another gang of girls. And more fights kept emerging before her very eyes. These guys just come, come swinging up at each other like the fight was moving up like on the side of us. He was like, yeah, let's go, let's go get the gun, let's go get the gun. Fun games rides. That's how Tracy Taylor initially described the state fair, but after seeing fight after fight, her opinion changed. I don't know if they were going to jump them just out of bl the blue. It was scary because you didn't know if they were going to uh, hurt you or not, jump you. I just call water. We got a little uh, parking lot here at Gate 5 Valet. Uh, then we also do some water here, a couple water boys. Just a uh, just couple of young entrepreneurs trying to make it happen here. You can add referee and first aid worker to Steve Talarchik's job list as he witnessed hundreds blocking the intersection near his business. And I see a bunch of kids attacking this guy here in the, uh, here in the street. So I jump up, run out here, clear these kids out of the way, and there's just, they're just running up on him, put a little ice on him. He's got a got a knot on his head about the size of Cuba. The pink bracelet serve as a reminder to an unforgettable opening day. But the question many have is why? If it keeps going on, how much security can you put out there? Their own security is getting beat up. Everybody's got to get together to stop things, to do things. Brett Boganski, Fox 6 News. Milwaukee's mayor and police chief are speaking out about the incident. Both of them guarantee that people should feel safe going to the state fair or any other event in the city this weekend. We're guaranteeing to the public that we are making these venues safe and accessible for the families of the greater metropolitan area. Now, we're not going to see a repeat of what we saw that occurred last night at the state fair. We will have increased police presence in these events to ensure that people who are coming to this community will have a safe summer weekend for themselves and their families. Milwaukee Alderman Bob Donovan and Joe Dudzik released a bold statement today about what they call a deteriorating African-American culture in our city. Their statement reads in part, are large groups of Hispanics or Hmong going out in large mobs and viciously attacking whites? No. There are repercussions for single parent homes where children aren't properly supervised and where they aren't held responsible for their actions. The statement ends by saying, we believe change must come from within the African American community where new seeds must be sown. And that call for change is also coming from the local NAACP chapter today. There's no excuse for the conduct, but we believe that we as a community need to come together and work on solutions to the problems as opposed to uh, simply 
uh, using it as perhaps an opportunity to divide ourselves or stereotype or other um, negative implications. For more on the chaos at the State Fair, head to our website, fox6now.com. Often people decide if they're going to go to State Fair or not based on the weather. Justin Zalich says temperature shouldn't be keeping anyone away. He is here right now with a look at the weather. Justin. Yeah, temperatures have been great for the start of the fair, and they should be pretty good over the weekend. It's those sticky dew points, which we're just trying to get rid of. Doesn't look like we'll do that this weekend, but we will have a better chance in your six-day forecast. Here's what we have outside right now. 74 degrees at Mitchell International, and there's that... Uh, Sticky dew point. Won't even, won't even mention the number, but it's too high. We all know that. Heat index at 75 right now. Just some broken clouds out there. Maybe late tonight we'll see a shower or two, but for the most part, what you see on the radar here is not reaching the ground. This is a composite of all the radars. If we show just the radar closest to Milwaukee, you see some ground clutter on the screen, but you don't see any showers moving across the screen, so it gives you an indication that we're still a ways away from actually seeing those raindrops hitting the ground. We'll throw in a slight chance of a shower late tonight, more than likely after midnight, but probably even after 3 or 4 a.m. for most of us in the metro Milwaukee area. Patchy fog, 68 degrees, and then for the weekend, 84 for those inland locations. Again, with the humidity, it might feel just a little bit warmer than that. We'll break down our rain chances for the weekend coming up a little bit later in the show. All right, Justin, thank you. A drop in the temperatures would be welcome. A drop in our credit rating would not. Some very bad news from Standard & Poor's tonight. And six Republican state senators will try to keep their jobs on Tuesday, and one in particular is considered vulnerable. We'll take you to the one district which political watchers think could flip. The Packers are holding